there wasn't ever a specific time where I saw the doctors and nurses ask my mom to leave. It was only because this was the day that she had to go to work, and that was my last conversation with her. Whereas with my dad, I vividly remember people coming in and telling him that this was his last time to say goodbye to me. So was this the last time you saw your mom? Uh, the last time I saw my mom, my dad wasn't there. Um, I was laying in the bed. This was while you were in your room? Yeah, you Still gone? in the PICU. Still in the PICU? Still in the PICU, yes. So this is pretty close to when you checked in? Or yes, got it yes. I, was, oh. I know I was still in the PICU. Um, my mom was, like, picking up her work bag and just, like, little things she had brought to the hospital. And she said, I love you and I'll see you tomorrow. And I never saw her again. Need some water? Yeah. Um, I noticed you're wearing a necklace. Why don't you explain that? Yeah, so, um, so December 10th was my birthday. I had turned 11, and I was unfortunately still in the hospital at the time. And the hospital has this program where they collect funds um, for children who are still in the hospital on their birthday. I was given $20 to spend. And um, I remember the social worker came in and she asked me what I'd like to buy. I bought a Nerf gun for my brother. I bought my mom a necklace. And then I bought my dad his favorite bag of mints because I didn't have a lot of money left over. But then my Aunt Wendy bought him this little glass Christmas tree and we just said it was for me um, but I bought my mom this very specific necklace that says I love you to the moon and back it's just like she always said that to me um, and then I found out later that she wore it every single day and when she was found in the garage she was still wearing it <laughs> and I have it on my neck right now <laughs> Have some water. Sorry. We'll get through it. Can we publish uh, twenty-seven? Excuse me, twenty-five seventy-one zero zero one. We're going to switch for a second there, Molly, and uh, ask you about uh, obvious symptoms at the time of your admission. Now, the record reflects it. This is October 8th, 2016, so this would have been the day after you, you came was, in. Yes. And was it a Friday, and then this, this one would have been on a Saturday? Correct. All right. And what is that there? It's a lesion, and again, the same thing. It's just smaller ones connecting. Okay. Now, um, since that time, have you had the opportunity to review some of the Johns Hopkins records that were supposed to be documenting your condition here and there? Yes. All right. Let's uh, show 1001-2645, uh, and I'll represent for the record. It'll show it's the skin assessment for that same day. So it's got one circular red scab and one circular pink? Yes. But nothing else about the other uh, lesions on your body? Correct. Did you have one on your back or not? I um, had one on my back, but I also had them in other areas, which they failed to document. So the ones they're talking about here, and this can be confusing, they're talking about the one on your back, or did they ever talk about the one on your legs? They never, the ones on your legs. Yeah, no, they didn't, not on that date. Okay. Let's continue then. Um, so you begin your stay there. Um, were your mom and dad uh, able to come see you in your room? Um, at this time? At this time, yes. Okay. Your dad. Okay. And then 
Um, tell us about the rooms you stayed in during this period of time, October, November, December of 2016. Regular hospital rooms? Um, so first the emergency room, then the PICU. Um, the most distinguishing thing about the PICU, even though every room kind of has it, it's the circular clock. Um, and I remember that because that's all I looked at for days, and I just heard it tick because um, I didn't have the strength to watch anything on the TV. And then when I was moved up from the PICU to a different floor, I believe it was seven. I stayed on seven a lot. I had multiple different rooms, even though their policy is every 30 days you switch a room. I think I had, I mean, I stayed there over 90 days, but I had way more than three rooms. And these rooms had surveillance cameras. And when I was placed in those rooms with the surveillance cameras, I was told that to not worry about them, they don't work. So now, if we could, there has been uh, allegations here that you were uh, outside your room 95% of the time. Can you tell the jury whether that's true? That's not true at all. Most of the time I was in my room. There were times where I went to PT, which I was outside my room, and there was a few occasions where I went to the rec room. Um, but for, I would say, the majority of my time, I was kept in my room. And was there, did the rooms have the kids that were there, their names on the door or next to the door? So at one point, I started to get wheeled out into the hallways and whatnot. Um, and that's when I was going to PT or the rec room. Uh -huh. And I noticed something really weird was that all the other rooms on the floor, they had name tags. It would say the patient's name and just the last initial. Whereas with mine, I just had a sheet of paper in there with color-coded stickers. I asked the nurses what the color corresponded to and what that meant and why I didn't have a name, and they would not tell me. I asked multiple nurses, and all of them said, I can't tell you. During this period of time, do you recall an instance where your mom was trying to get in touch with you and the nurse said something different than just simply putting it through to you? Which instance? Was there a time during this period, this first week or so, mm -hmm. when uh, your mom called for you and you did not receive the call but overheard what was said? Yes. So I remember that my mom was um, on this phone call and the person who she was speaking to, a person at the hospital, I'm not sure what role they had, but they claimed that I never asked to speak to my mom. I was doing fine. I was okay in my room. I hadn't had any questions about why my parents weren't allowed to see me. And that infuriated me so much because all I did for days on end was demand to speak to my parents. That's all I wanted to do. And I most certainly wasn't just sitting in my room. I was crying. And I... So now, were there other kids on the floor? I mean, were there yes. you know, somebody to talk to, somebody you could, for lack of a better term, play with? Well, it's a children's hospital, so there's plenty of kids all around. I, um, again, I went to the rec room. So for people who don't know what that is, it's just like a playroom. You could do activities. Um, there's volunteers there. Um, so I remember going down there. Nurse wheeled me down. Uh -huh. And I was just working on some art project. I don't remember what. But this really sweet social girl, she came over to me, and she just started talking to me. How old would you, would you think? She, was, she looked around my age, I would say, or maybe a little bit. Actually, younger. Sorry, my bad. Younger for certain. Um, and her mom noticed that she came over to me a lot and was talking to me. Come to find out, we were on the same floor. Um, I was on seven. And I saw her out in the hallway one day, and I asked the nurse to wheel me out. So the nurse wheeled me out. She brought me to the area. So there's like this, on the floor, there's this huge window where you could see outside of the hospital. So you could see like the street and all the cars passing by. And there's a little chair um, that faces this window. So people who just wanted like a change of scenery could go over there. So her mom was there with Natalie, the friend that I had made. And I was wheeled over there and I talked to them. 
Another nurse observed this interaction and quickly told somebody. Next thing I know, Kathy Beattie is in my room saying I'm not to ever speak to a patient again. Um, and that day, Natalie had given me this little present because her mom noticed my parents were never with me. I think they just wanted to comfort me, and I have it in my bag today. Did they ever give you any reason why you, as a 10-year-old, couldn't just talk to the kid next door, for lack of a better term? I have no reason. I mean, they didn't give me any reason, and it was heartbreaking because, you know, they had my door open a lot, and the blinds were open, so I could see other people conversing and interacting, and here I am all alone. Mm -hmm.